Google has just released this free open source Python library Gen AI processors that lets you build AI pipelines by snapping together reusable building blocks called processors. This is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. If this is the first time you are visiting the channel, please subscribe and like the video. In this video, we are going to install this Gen AI processor locally and I will be showing you with a real world use case as how to use it. First, let's try to understand what exactly this tool is. Think of it like a Lego blocks for AI. You can create simple processors that do one thing well, like cleaning up text or calling an AI model then chain them together using plus for step-by-step -step processing or to run them in parallel. Everything flows through streams of processor part, objects that can hold text, images or audio or even videos or whatever content you are working with and since it's all built on Python's async framework, you can handle real-time data without blocking. So let's get it installed and we will see how it works. I'm going to use this Ubuntu system. For that, I'm very grateful to Mast Compute. If you're also looking to rent a VM or GPU or CPU on very, very cheap prices, you can find the link to Mast Compute in video's description with a discount coupon code of 50% for a range of GPUs. So you can see that I'm going to create this Conda virtual environment so that everything I install remains separate. You don't have to do it, but always a good practice while it creates this virtual environment. Let me also introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are Camel AI. Camel is an open source community focused on building multi-agent infrastructures for finding the scaling laws with applications in data generation, task automation and world simulation. And you can also find the link to their website in video's description. Okay, let me take you back to my terminal and then we will install this Gen AI processors. It's a simple pip command, so just run it on your Windows, Mac or wherever you are installing it. Now next step which you need to do while it installs this is go to aistudio.google.com and from there you would need to sign up with your Gmail account if this is the first time and then you need to grab your API key as you can see on the top right. It's a free API key. You can also have a paid option, but more in most cases, this free API should be enough as it gives you a lot of grunt. Okay, so I already have my API key, so I'm going to go back. And then I'm going to set up my key here in the environment. You can set it in your profile. So let me set my key and clear the screen. And now let me show you how to use this Gen AI processor. So what I have done, I have just created this simple application here. So overall, what this code here is doing, it is testing the core feature of this Gen AI processors library. We already have installed it and now we are going to create some custom text processors. We are going to chain them together sequentially and then we are going to integrate it with Google's Gemini AI model and then run the processor in parallel. Essentially, we are showcasing the library's building blocks approach to create AI pipeline. So you see, I am importing all the stuff which we have already created. And once that's done, we are uh, initializing our API key, which we already have set it in the environment. And then we have this decorator function. This one I'm talking about. So this creates a processor that adds a processed prefix and replaces periods with EOS or end of sentence tag the add processor function decorator converts this async generator into a proper processor object. And don't worry, all of these code examples are present in their GitHub repo and I will drop the link in video's description. I have just made some changes in order to um, be more presentable and workable in this demo. Okay, now once we have this, next you can see that I am creating another decorator processor function which converts all text to uppercase while passing through non-text content unchanged. And then we have some test function which tests individual processor on simple text input. That is all this text function is doing and then it is chaining with simple text processor plus uppercase processor. So we have simply chained them together and created a chain here. 
and then we have just exited and this is where we are initializing our gemini 2 model with the api key which we have set in the code that this code is doing okay so once that's done let me now take you back to the terminal and then i am going to run this to showcase you how exactly this works let's run this and there, there you go so you can see that the code has run successfully if i show you the output it um, shows you how this gen ai processor work in practice so you see that at the top we have this basic processor output this is um, just showing you that it has added this processed word here and then once we test the gen ai model this is where it gets cool the text first went through the simple text processor then uh, after adding the processed and replacing the dots it has went through the uppercase and then it has converted into uppercase and you can notice how that uh, eos has been uh, added there and then uppercase also just converted into uppercase how cool is that so and then you can see there's a bit of streaming here and parallel execution this is where it was parallel so we have got both the start version and the arrow version because this is i was just you know different differentiating between them that i am running it in parallel so this is just some code trickery i have done but it clearly shows that not only you can run it sequentially but also in a parallel way so pretty good stuff and really good on google for open sourcing it and licenses apache too Okay, in the next example, let's check out a bit more comprehensive uh, stuff. So what I'm going to do in this example, I am showcasing you how this Gen AI processor can do content handling. It is going to show you how the library wraps and manages different types of data, text, images, JSON in a unified way. So you see that I'm again importing everything. Then there is simple function which creates an image and then returns it as a byte. So not only I am going to showcase here what exactly is happening with text, but also with images. And then there are some classes which I have defined in terms of uh, simple text processor part, text with rich metadata, structured JSON data along with images. And also then we are processing some of the um, metadata and then modifying existing parts with the new attributes. So you see, not only it is dealing with unstructured, but also structured data. It is dealing with JSON. And then this is where we are concatenating everything and chaining them together as we did earlier. So one pipeline, in one pipeline, but different components, different processor working together. So this is primarily a unified way to handle any type of content, text, image, structured data in AI pipeline with the help of this uh, gen ai processor as you can see here you can even go with the audio one i have just put in some fake audio data just to show, showcase you so let me run this and look at the speed there you go so it is generating all the data it is chaining them together how good is that let there you go let me explain what happened here so if you look at this output first we have uh, this text part which shows how the library is automatically detecting mime types and like text plane and stuff and then handles metadata like timestamps roles and custom attributes then it can also do the image handling as you can see if i come down there it has created a th 305 byte png image from code and a 60 by 30 uh, webp image from pillow library and it shows that library automatically handles format conversion and mime type detection so once that's done you can see that it can also do the text extraction it can do content type analysis once that's done um, you see that i am asking few queries so which is primarily asking about a modular ai architecture and got a comprehensive well-structured response in the second query, if you go down, it will show you how we have sent a multi-part content asking for analysis of explaining machine learning in simple terms. And then we have um, 
just asked it few more questions and this is all being done in it is also doing some so i think there's some printing error but that is fine so all in all it has done all the analysis with the help of llm from the chained processors and then it has returned you the unified response so you know if you have been using this side of this type of workflow for sequential or parallel working with different sort of uh, data types I'm sure that you might be using some third party tool or, you know, you are doing a lot of tinkering with maybe, um, you know, lang chain and that sort of framework. But this really takes it to another level uh, by simplifying it. Anyway, let me know what do you think. Please like the video and share it among your network and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you for all the support.